Hi, I'm Josh Richards. I'm a hand, elbow, and shoulder surgeon in Oakland, California. Today I'm going to talk to you about what to expect after a humerus fracture. Humerus being this portion of your arm. Today I'm going to talk about the more mid-shaft area. In a different video we'll talk about other spots. So uh, mid-shaft humerus fractures kind of along here. Also shaft fractures occur more towards the elbow side or up towards the shoulder. So, uh, in any case, a shaft fracture of the humerus uh, is typically a pretty painful injury to go through. Uh, usually it requires a lot of force. Um, it's a tough one. Uh, this is not an easy one to recover from. Uh, sometimes you need surgery, sometimes you don't. Uh, what determines that? Well, what we call stability. Stability is determined on various things. One is how far out of place the bone is, another is how angulated it is, another is how rotated it is, and sometimes also just on location. So let's go over like a mid-shaft humerus fracture. Those are tough. It, it can be treated conservatively if the bone's reasonably aligned. Um, it's really hard to go through that, however. Why? Well, if you can imagine having to hold your arm still by your side for a long time, that's not easy. Uh, your shoulder will get super stiff. Also, no matter what we put you in, whatever plastic brace or gizmo we put in, um, it still hurts a lot in the first month. So every time you go to move, the bone's going to shift a little. So it's kind of miserable. So uh, albeit treating this conservatively can work, it's a really rough thing to go through. Um, so if you did treat it conservatively, typically, uh, you show up from the emergency room in a big bulky splint and sling. Usually around two weeks we switch it to more of a custom made plastic brace that uh, either locks up your elbow or your shoulder or both. Um, and then slowly over the course of time we switch it to a brace that doesn't lock up your elbow or shoulder so that you can get them moving. So what that means is your elbow and shoulder are typically locked up for some period of time. Uh, and they both get stiff. So getting a stiff elbow and a stiff shoulder is really hard to get through. So when someone goes through conservative management, usually by a month, it doesn't hurt as bad, and then they're working on getting their elbow moving and their shoulder moving, but it's hard. And even if the bone heals by eight weeks, which is kind of maybe the average, um, but and it's probably more 10 to 12 is the truth, um, your shoulder is so stiff that it takes you super long time to get your motion back. And uh, it's painful. It's very hard to get your shoulder motion back with a conservatively treated humerus fracture mid-shaft. So uh, by three months, you know, your bone's healed, but you're still having a lot of trouble moving it. And it can take as long as 9 to 12 months to get your arm all the way up without pain. So that's a tough thing to go through. So whenever I see someone has a mid-shaft humerus fracture or a shaft fracture in general, and we're really talking about conservative management, I know that's going to be really hard for them. On the opposite end, you could get a bigger, pretty big surgery, which is a large cut either on the front side of your arm or the back. We tend to put them on the back for cosmetic reasons, so you're not staring at it all the time. Although either, either incision is reasonable. And put a plate on there. Uh, what the plate does is it stabilizes the bone. Um, this plate, a little small for this type of injury, usually a little bigger, but the idea is it goes on the bone, a plate not a whole lot different than this, um, just a little bigger. And uh, it has screws, it goes through the bone, and it holds it nice and stable, so you can actually move your arm around without pain where the bone is bending. So if it's the bone stabilized, you can move your arm around a lot earlier. So you can rehab this much quicker. So if you had surgery within the first two weeks of the injury, then you can get into therapy right away, start moving a lot more aggressively, and you recover way quicker. So albeit you have to go through a painful procedure to get that plate put on, it does make your recovery a lot easier. Um, so is the plate necessary? Uh, well, um, it does increase the ability of the bone to heal by compressing it, so it increases the union rate or healing rate. Um, but oftentimes it's just a choice of having kind of a long, drawn out suffering recovery versus just getting the pain over quick and then getting moving, getting back to work and
play a lot quicker. Um, and just generally getting your motion back and being in less pain. Uh, the surgery is done as an outpatient. Uh, it takes a little while, it takes two hours, sometimes three, depending on how big the person is really and how bad the fracture. Uh, the biggest risk with the injury, uh, other than the large scar, which is not pretty, but um, again, if it's on the back, it's not as bad, uh, is an injury to a nerve called the radial nerve. Uh, some people come in, the nerve's already injured, and then uh, sometimes after surgery, the nerve, uh, which has to be moved during surgery, uh, can be uh, injured. That sounds scary. Uh, typically, in either scenario, the nerve is just temporarily doesn't work very well, um, which can be very, uh, uh, I don't want to say unnerving because that's just too cheesy, but the basic idea is some people come in, their radial nerves are already not working, which means their wrist or fingers don't go up and their thumb doesn't go up. And our job is to reassure them that that's going to come back, but it can take six months before it really starts to wake up. The important part, if that happens to you, is that you keep your digits and your wrist nice and limber. Don't let them get stiff. So if you do have a temporary radial nerve palsy, which does happen, uh, you want to make sure you're getting your fingers nice and loose so that when the nerve wakes up, the fingers and wrists can move fine. You don't want to let them get stiff. So uh, important part of the instructions we give the person that has a radial nerve palsy is to keep those wrists and digits moving often with therapy, but you can do it on your own. And that can be scary, but typically six months later it starts waking up and, and the motion and strength comes back, which is very strange, but it uh, almost always works. And the occasional person that doesn't come back, there are surgeries that we do that regain the strength of the digits, the wrist and the thumb by moving tendons around, and that actually works really well. So if you are the super rare person that your radial nerve doesn't come back, there are procedures to make that uh, strength come back as long as you kept your digits nice and limber. So again, that's super important to make sure you don't get a stiff wrist and fingers. Um, so in review, uh, humeral shaft fractures uh, can be treated conservatively, but it's really rough. Not all can be treated conservatively. Um, surgical management makes it stable and makes it a lot easier to recover from. Uh, as far as the average time of healing, eight to 10 weeks typically, sometimes longer, sometimes quicker. Uh, this is a tough one to get back to 100%, but it, it can be done and it can take as long as nine to 12 months. So it's a bigger injury. It takes a lot longer to recover from than some other ones. Thank you very much.